All right, thank you, gentlemen. Now we want to introduce you to a heroic father and son team who refused to give up after a little boy had a near death experience after surgery. Now, Kevin and Mason Earl are joining me, and I'm going to let them tell you how quick thinking and CPR saved little Mason's life. And also, Steve Huffman with Mobile Fire Rescue is going to give you some tips on CPR that you may need to save a life one day. So very important. And I know Mason's being a little bit shy, but we would love to hear exactly what happened. This is very recent. He had surgery, and surgery went fine. Perfect. But you got him home, and that's when everything happened. Correct. On, uh, it was on a Monday, last Monday in July, I believe the 29th. Everything was fine. Normally, if any bleeding's going to happen, it happens in 24 hours. Um, Tuesday night, he wanted to sleep in his own bed. He was acting fine, normal, like nothing was wrong. I uh, went in and told him good night. I laid down, and at midnight, I woke up to my wife screaming in the hall, holding him. He was bleeding a lot. He was losing a lot of blood. He had popped an artery in the back of his throat. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, it was apparent that he was in trouble, and he knew he was in trouble. So I grabbed him, elevated his feet. My wife called 911. But like any mother, she was at that point, she was losing it. So I talked to the 911 instructor and, or operator and told him what was going on, what had happened. Um, his age, things like that, and I had given Mason to his mother. And about that time, as I got the address out and what was going on, the uh, I heard my watch screen were losing it. And uh, at that scary. point, I uh, set the phone on the speaker and and ran and grabbed him, and he he gurgled a little bit and he stopped breathing. Um, so sorry, we uh, mm. I sat him on the floor, and the 911 instructor asked me, "Did I know CPR?" And I told him, yes, I did. Um, he was keeping me calm because at this point I was just about to lose it myself. Sure. So we, we cleared his little throat. I felt for a pulse. At first I didn't feel one. So I did a series of compressions. I knew he had a pulse when I felt the second time. And I'm pretty sure it was there the first time. I was just so nervous that I missed it. So we were able to give him up. Three or four series of breaths. 911 operator once again reminded me he got his head tilted back far enough. And I didn't. Um, so we got him breathing after about three or four series. He rolled over and he let out a breath and could tell he was breathing because he was bubbling through the blood. It was lots of blood. And uh, we just laid there till the uh, first responders got there. And they got there really quickly. They did a great job. Got some oxygen on him and he started crying and it was the best feeling in the world. I, I mean, just I have chills just listening to your story. I mean, I've, I've heard this story and still just hearing it as we're sitting here talking. You know, can you imagine being that parent? And, you know, Mason went in for tonsillectomy and something. You don't, you don't think anything can happen. Mm -hmm. He's through it. He's out of the hospital. All seems well. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's, you never know what's going to happen. But you learned CPR in the Navy. Correct. And as you mentioned, you didn't have it 100% right, but the, C, but the 911 operator, walked you through this and you stayed on the phone and kept you calm Correct. and here he is today yeah. as precious as can be and Mason <laughs> you're doing good right yes, yeah oh he is so cute and Steve it is so important that we all know CPR because again you never know just like a circumstance like this you never know when you're going to need yeah, it. I can't stress enough how important it is for people to know CPR uh, this case here, uh, he had some knowledge of CPR. He had learned it back in the Navy, and it changes from time to time. The basics are pretty much the same, but the compressions, the breaths change from time to time, uh, and we learn new ways to do it. Uh, the other good thing is that our dispatchers, as well as Mobile County EMS dispatchers, can talk you through CPR. Uh, as long as you're willing to do it, they can tell you how to do CPR, and they can walk you through the steps. Um, However, it's important for people to go out and learn to do CPR. Uh, we were talking about earlier, this is the only thing that you can do medically where you don't have to have special tools. Anybody can learn to do this and help somebody. On average, it takes us three to four minutes and maybe up to six minutes to get on the scene. And if we get there and nobody's done anything, chances are we're not going to have a viable patient yeah. and they're not going to survive. But if you've got somebody on the scene who can initiate CPR early, and as soon as it happens, the chance of that person's survival goes up. 
And CPR is different for infants, toddlers, and adults. There's, all there's, different right. techniques. You can't just do CPR on anybody. You've got to know the differences between the infant, uh, children, and adults. And that's the reason why it's so important for people to learn. Uh, there is, uh, through the American Heart Association, you can go on their website, uh, there's videos. In fact, there's phone apps that you can get that's called hands-on CPR. This is for adults only. You can't okay. do this on a child. Okay. Uh, it's for adults only. And you don't have to give breaths. All you have to do is do compress, uh, chest compressions. And it okay. talks you through the method. Okay, now we've also put some links to the American Heart Association. They also offer CPR classes. Just click on that link and you can see when classes are going to be offered in your area. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And it's great to have you here with us, Mason. You're going to say bye to everybody on camera? Say bye bye. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>